Hello everyone, welcome to my how-to video on the Queen's Hand Trial in Against the Storm. I recently live streamed my very first attempt at the Queen's Hand mode um, on our live stream and we actually managed to emerge victorious on the very first attempt here. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to share with you the strategies that, that I used to create a successful Queen's Hand Mode attempt, as well as providing some insights on how to get started and sort of guiding you through the first settlement. Let's jump into our Queen's Hand Mode playthrough here, and I'll elaborate a little bit more on what exactly is the Queen's Hand Trial. At the beginning of a Queen's Hand expedition, you're greeted with this lengthy contract, which basically says, succeed or die are your only options here. You have to agree to move on forward here, signing yourself to quite a dark fate. So Queen's Hand Trial is unlocked after you break the Adamantine Seal, the Prestige 20 Seal in the base game. You basically have to complete a normal save file to even unlock this mode. And it is a very difficult permadeath mode. The idea is that you start pretty much fresh um, at the smoldering city with effectively none of the normal meta progression upgrades. You don't have any of the percent bonuses to impatience reduction or double yields or bonus node charges or anything like that. You only have the starting embarkation points and embarkation uh, bonus options. And you have very few things unlocked in general. For example, your hearth can only um, go to level one. You can't get level two or three hearths. Um, you do have trade routes and rain engines unlocked at the beginning, but um, other fundamental upgrades are not going to be available. So you're you're very weak at the start of a new Queen's Hand playthrough. So you get no prog meta progression to start, and you have one Blightstorm cycle. You get 92 years to reach all the way out to one of these adamantine seals, which require 105 seal fragments to break. And that means one of the major obstacles for a Queen's Hand playthrough is simply getting the required count of um, seal fragments. It's quite difficult to amass the, the required number. So how should you start? How do you, <clears throat> how do you start uh, surviving and thriving? Here at the beginning, all of the difficulties are unlocked, so you're allowed to play on any prestige level that you want, all the way up to prestige 20 at the beginning, with the rewards um, being based on what prestige level you beat. For example, if you play on Settler, you'll only get 14 food and one seal fragment, which is not enough to actually be worth it. Whereas playing on P20, you get 112 food and nine seal fragments. However, you can't start on P20. Um, it's just too hard. You'll you'll lose the first settlement guaranteed if, if you try P20. What I recommend doing to get started is a circle or semicircle of settlements close to the capital. You see these gray hexagonal borders as you get further and further away from the capital. These are sort of distance markers. And as you cross each threshold, you get a penalty to your embarkation points as well as a higher minimum difficulty. So right around the capital, you can play on settler difficulty if you wish. Um, but the further out you go, the higher you have to escalate the difficulty with the very final tier here at the very end um, where the seal is located, requiring a prestige 20 game. This one's P15, P10, I think P5, and that's like Viceroy and the earlier difficulties. So you can do Viceroy all the way out to here if you want to. Um, in order to get enough seal fragments, you're going to want to win a large number of games. As mentioned, you've got 92 years before the Blightstorm arrives. And that means that, um, that that's 92 in-game years of your settlement. So if, if you play a settlement and it takes eight years to win, then that eats eight years of the cycle progress. 
you want to be shooting for around six years per win, um, especially in the early games, as you're close to the Citadel, able to take advantage of embarkation bonuses, that sort of thing. Um, that's that's the juicy stuff. Hmm. Is getting lots and lots of settlements. In my winning attempt, we managed to do, I believe, 14 settlements in 92 years. So we came pretty close to a six-year average. Um, and that helped a lot. Uh, for your early settlements, whoops, for the early settlements, you're going to want to settle near modifiers like this one. Modifiers that give royal resupply, because you can use those royal resupplies to take additional seal fragment rewards, um, specifically five additional seal fragments. I recommend starting on a lower prestige level. Uh, I found that prestige two was a really good balance point between difficulty and um, collecting lots of resources. You want to be able to get as many you know, food and machinery and such as possible to begin getting unlocks at the Smoldering City, uh, while also keeping the games short. Again, you want to keep towards six years per win. And even though higher difficulties are more rewarding, because they'll take more years to prevail, uh, I think it's better to do a larger number of lower difficulty games than it is to do a higher number of high difficulty, or to, to do a, a lower number of high difficulty games is, is not as good. Um, especially because in the Queen's Hand mode, if you fail any one settlement, it means your entire cycle is game over. You have to start again from the beginning. As you're collecting um, royal resupplies, I highly recommend focusing on locations that provide machinery as a reward with artifacts. So machinery is the, the gears here. And then artifact is the kind of like blue crystal with a gold outline. Um, at the smoldering city, you can buy packs of upgrades. Um, the first one, you get 25 picks of three up here. And then these four fundamental upgrades are always available with a cornerstone pool increase and reputation pick pool increase being particularly important ones. What I have found is that in Queen's Hand mode, machinery is the limiting reagent when it comes to your resources for upgrades. Um, I struggled to get enough machinery to get all of the unlocks. In fact, in our Queen's Hand mode playthrough that was successful, we ended up not getting the additional cornerstone or reputation pool increases at all because we could not collect enough machinery. And that really, really... Um, made it a lot harder than it needed to be. So, strongly recommend placing an early emphasis on machinery locations so that you can accumulate um, enough resources to get the, the proper unlocks. Food tends to be really plentiful, uh, as well as artifacts. Um, and as you, as you explore the map in the semicircle, you also want to place your locations your settlements, that is, in locations that will reveal as many point of interest, as many question mark nodes as possible here. Looking for more map modifiers to play next to for more resources and more royal resupplies, as well as looking for events that can give cycle-long bonuses. Some of these points of interest are world events where you can sometimes earn long-term benefits, uh, and those will help all of your future settlements, so... Essentially, revealing as many of these as possible so that you can investigate them is, is really important. So yeah, take events that provide cycle-long bonuses as you find them. So, sem circle or semicircle to gather resources, but at some point you'll have to pick one of the adamantine seals. There should be three or four of them. One, two... Three, four, yeah, four of them kind of in the four corners here. They're all very well hidden. Once you have around 70 or so seal fragments, um, you want to start picking one of the seals and beelining towards it. So imagine maybe a semicircle going around and collecting all of these map modifiers and then striking off towards an adamantine seal. I, I, hopefully... Uh, following a path that hits lots of points of interest along the way. Um, as you do that, you'll need to increase your difficulty as 
indicated by the distance. So like I said, I think you need to be Prestige 5 in this band, Prestige 10 in this band, Prestige 15 here, and then Prestige 20 for the final game. You should be able to reach the seal by placing a settlement here at the very edge of the Prestige 15 territory, and then directly move to the seal for the final game. That means you'll only need to play one game, the Sealed Forest on Prestige 20. As you do this, um, avoid map modifiers that are really difficult. So each, each map modifier provides some sort of custom penalty for your game. And some of them are harder than others. For example, the bandit camp modifier means no trading and no trade routes. And that's an example of a very difficult map modifier. Um, this will typically mean your settlement takes a couple of extra years, and if you're playing on a high difficulty, this can easily cause you to lose because you're unable to solve uh, glade events or such. I find some of the hardest ones to be no trading, um, no pause, the shattered obelisk, I think it's called. There's one that disables the pause function. Um, anything that causes faster impatience gain can be tough too, like land of greed. Causes impatience to grow faster, but every ongoing trade route reduces your impatience generation by 20%. That's, um, that one's a little bit tough as well. Uh, although, again, more difficult the further out you are. And you want to keep collecting embarkation points. Keep track of exactly how many seal fragments you have. At the beginning, I recommend playing Prestige 2. That will give you five seal fragments per win. So let's say... You can do 10 settlements on Prestige 2. That would be 50 seal fragments, but you need 105 total, so you'd need another... Um, you'd need another 55, which would mean taking, um, taking seal fragments from your Royal Resupply 11 times. Uh, realistically, you'll, you'll probably get another 20-ish seal fragments on the way to the Adamantine Seal. Uh, but what I'm trying to get at is uh, very carefully count your seal fragments, how many settlements you think that you can get in, um, and determine how many times you need to take the royal resupply seal fragments. Any additional modifiers that you're able to complete, you're able to grab the embarkation point, reserve embarkation point reward, which will be very helpful for the final seal uh, in the forest. Lastly, for your last couple of games, as you approach the seal, you're going to want to lean on the Forsaken Altar to finish your games. This is the altar that you can build mid-game for uh, a large number of bricks and wood that summons the Priestess during the storm. The Priestess will offer you three Stormforged perks in exchange for either your meta progression resources or the lives of your settlers. Towards the end of your Queen's Hand mode playthrough, you should have a stockpile of food and probably some artifacts as well. And you can sacrifice those in your final few games to give you the last little leg up that you need. Uh, I found this really, really helpful for the P20 seal in particular, but also the, the couple of games leading up to it. Like maybe the three, the two or three games immediately pr prior to the seal, you're going to want to use that Forsaken Altar to get as much of a bonus as you can because... Once you reach the high difficulties, uh, it's not going to feel very fair anymore, and you really will need those uh, Stormforge perks to get a leg up. Definitely. So, once you reach the Sealed Forest, and this is a big if, uh, if you can get all the way to the end, you're faced with an extra difficult um, trial here. If you've got any hoarded embarkation points, this will be the time to use them. Uh, ideally, starting with a, a large number of resources can help make the sealed forest a lot less painful. In particular, I recommend taking embarkation bonuses that give you fuel. Coal, wood, planks are all very good. Anything that will mean that you have to chop fewer trees in the sealed forest map, because in the sealed forest, your hostility increases with every tree that you cut down. So. Any tree that you can spare, effectively, will save you in terms of hostility. So there's a big reward for doing that. Uh, I recommend a having a, a picking a caravan that has humans on it for the final game. <clears throat> this means you can use one of them as your ancient earthkeeper for 25% reduced impatience gain, and this will buy you more time on the final map. It doesn't matter how many years it takes you to win the 
final seal. Uh, actually, likewise, um, you can go over the year limit uh, on the settlement before the final seal. So even if you have one or two years left, you're allowed to make the final settlement. And then as long as you win, even if it takes 10 or 12 years, you can try the sealed forest. And once again, the sealed forest doesn't matter how many years it takes in game to win. As long as you can prevail, then you're set. So, um, also regarding the, the final sealed forest, knowing what you're going into will, uh, will really, really help. Uh, in particular, the orders that the seal asks for, forging the hearts, is not random. Um, you get the same, same tasks assigned to you each time, effectively. Uh, and in, in particular, the, the final task required of you by the ancient seal um, never changes, which means you should be planning your final order from the beginning. You have essentially three options for the final order. Uh, the first option is you deliver two ancient tablets and you deal with two forbidden glades. So you might want to hoard tablets and prep those forbidden glades. You have, you've got to do two forbidden glades within, um, I think it's like 20 minutes, 100, uh, 1200 seconds of each other. Or you can keep all of your people very happy. It's like 30 or 40 resolve per species for five minutes straight. That's what we did in our game, and it worked out really well. Um, but it was pretty tough. Or you have to use 600 units of rainwater across your settlement, which is it's quite, a, quite a lot. That is three or four buildings with rain engines running rain full time um, for several years. So you, you really have to use rainwater early and often in your sealed forest game in order to do that third order. I strongly recommend reading through the order possibilities on, for example, the Against the Storm wiki to give you an idea of exactly what you'll be tasked with in the final sealed forest. Um, that can definitely help make your, your life a little bit easier. If you're going the rainwater route, you'll also need lots of fuel to burn the blight rot cysts that spawn as a result of using that much rainwater. Um, so you'll also want a renewable fuel source. Highly recommend coal or oil. Oil is very good. If you can turn plant fiber into lots of oil through something like a press, that can really help with making enough purging fire. But that's all dependent on what actually spawns in your sealed forest map. Um, either way, good luck out there, Viceroy's. It's, it's definitely tough taking down that, that P20 seal. So, but what about the first settlement? We talked about the last settlement and sort of the overall map strategy. What do you actually do in the, the first settlement? You definitely want to stick to low difficulty. Uh, like I said, I recommend uh, starting-ish around Prestige 2. Uh, you'll want to open your dangerous glade, open an, a dangerous glade during the, the year one storm. More on that in a moment as well as delay your additional order opening, your timed order, because of the possibility of timed orders. I also recommend the first settlement not being near too difficult a map modifier. Um, more so than others, your very first settlement is actually quite challenging because you have no upgrades at all. Uh, whereas each successful settlement will score us some upgrades and therefore we can, we can get stuff done. So what I'm going to do is let's let's actually show a demo game here of a f opening settlement in Queen's Hand mode here. And so we're going to pick one of these modifiers that are near the, the capital. Uh, and I think this frost one is pretty good. Reduce the radius of hearths by three fields means you can actually build more hearths early on. You can you can make your hearths closer together. It's sort of an advantage. Although you have less room for houses, which can be a bit of an issue. All these other modifiers seem like they could make things a little bit more difficult. More hostility is definitely more difficult. No trading is pretty difficult. Twice hostility per year is pretty difficult with ominous presence. No orders with the Fishman ritual site. It's also very nasty. So I'd say probably Frost is one of the easiest ones to do here. You also want to avoid difficult biomes um, as you're as you're playing in Queen's Hand mode. Not all biomes in Against the Storm are made equal, um, or rather, each biome can have different challenges to it. I find Royal Woodlands pretty easy. Um, there's plenty of plenty of wood from the trees in Royal Woodlands, which can make things pretty easy. Whereas in Marshlands, the trees don't provide as much wood, so I 
find that I tend to struggle with wood on marshlands and scarlet orchard. Uh, Cursed Royal Woodlands can be a real pain because of the ghosts that spawn. Sometimes they have really nasty requests that can make things challenging. So I consider Cursed Royal Woodlands one of the harder biomes as well. Um, I do tend to lean towards uh, Royal Woodlands when available. I'm just really practiced with that biome. But um, within your own play, I imagine you'll have biomes that you're more and or less comfortable with and just kind of follow that trend you know whatever you you find personally easiest to deal with is uh, what I would recommend utilizing here I like humans starting with 15 planks that sounds nice there's not much choice in terms of embrocation bonuses just grab the things and like I said I like to play on prestige 2 this is because prestige 2 adds the longer storm modifier which gives you essentially an additional two minutes per year. As previously mentioned, the number of years to win is what matters for these early settlements. So having longer years means it should take fewer total years to win. If you want, you can play on a lower difficulty and you'll get a little bit, um, a little bit less of a reward, which is a little discouraging, but even Viceroy is pretty reasonable. 20 machinery, four seal fragments. Um, might be more reasonable than Prestige 2. If you want a substantial bonus to get the sixth pre uh, seal fragment, you have to go all the way to Prestige 6, which is when buildings cost 50% more. And you really don't get that many more resources for it. So having having been up and down the, the difficulties here, I, I have personally found Prestige 2 to be the sweet spot. But um, feel free to experiment on your own. Okay, without further ado, I'm going to show a sample first settlement here. Um, how to get started, how to prevail here. What have we got for modifiers? Five amber for every drizzle season, plus an additional five amber for every hostility level reach. That's really cool, actually. I haven't seen this bonus before. And our random penalties don't seem too bad. Pay oil with each storm. Probably try to avoid hostility for here. All right, so we'll set up a couple of woodcutters camps. Set up some starting paths here. And we'll begin by cutting towards our first dangerous glade. We're also going to plop down some houses here. And the earth radius is tiny. Can make things a little complicated. I'm a harpy earth keeper for now. That'll make uh, our initial buildings go up a bit faster. Trapper's camp too. Don't forget decorations to level up the hearth to level two, so you get the happiness bonus to everybody. That's an important one. For the cornerstone picks, you're just looking for whatever is contextually most useful. Um, neither of these seem all that good, so I'm probably just going to decline and take some amber to start. Note that we actually started with 10 amber, thanks to that uh, forest blessing. That's pretty cool. Local taxes could be good if we started producing ale, but I have no faith that we will at the moment, even though we are humans. I'd rather have the early amber to help me deal with the first dangerous glade. At first dangerous glade is a bit of a doozy. My recommendation is to open this first dangerous glade uh, about halfway through your first storm. Um, that's also the time you should look at the starting orders. And once you see what's in your dangerous glade, that's when you pick the blueprints. That's my my personal recommendation anyway. We delay looking at these starting orders in order to take better advantage of any timed orders that appear. The timer for timed orders starts when you look at the order. Uh, and once you see a timed order, you cannot unpause the game without destroying it. So, uh, I think it's often best to wait a little bit. At least until you're prepared to break into a new glade. It's imperative to have your trading post up before the end of the first storm. That way the trader will arrive in time to help you with the contents of your first dangerous glade. Put these two humans on trapping momentarily. Get a little bit of food going. Don't have any lizards to get a bonus on the trapper's camp. That's okay. So the goal year one is, is generally for me to get the, the initial buildings of the settlement up. We actually need one more house. Get up the initial buildings for 
um, wood cutting and food generation. Get up houses and decorations to level up your hearth. Again, level one is the highest level you can get at the start here. So from here, we'll want to start building additional hearths to gain more resolve. Each hearth that's leveled up to level one, that means eight people live there and four comfort decorations are built, um, provides a plus two global resolve bonus, which is very good. And the more of those you stack together, the better. With that reduced hearth radius, that means we can build our hearths pretty close to each other, which is quite nice. Uh, however, we start with no bricks at all, which means we're going to need to either purchase or make some before we can make a second hearth here. Uh, there is clay in these flax fields that we can use to make bricks. Let's get our preppers camp up, and I'll make a crude workstation as well. It should go near the warehouse. Speaking of the warehouse, let's start excavating trees around that thing. Base near the warehouse is quite premium. Okay, nothing to build now. Uh, well, that's fine. That's fine. So, storm happens in a minute 30. Once that happens, we're going to be cutting into our first dangerous glade shortly after that. That'll show us what our initial challenge is, as well as what resources we can expect to be able to get short term. Can't live in the starting glade for long. You can get smaller amounts of resources by opening non-dangerous small glades. However, every glade you open increases your hostility. You get 15 per small glade, 30 per dangerous glade. However, the dangerous glades contain far more than twice the resources of the small glades, which means that uh, when looked at as a value proposition, the small glades are usually not worth it. Maybe opening one or two, especially if you're desperate for food, can be worth it, but... By and large, you really do not want to open too many small glades. All right, resolve might dip a bit during the initial storm. We can actually just solve that with favoring the harpies here. We don't need to adjust our woodcutter count or anything like that. So it's usually a little bit before I open my first dangerous glade that I want to look at my initial orders. Some might think you want to look at the orders after opening the glade to see what's inside, and, and that's valid, actually. Um, but I prefer to look at the orders first. Amber trade's very easy to do. We're getting lots of amber. That'll reward some tools. Look at that. I like tools. Deliver six purging fire or install three rain engines. Three rain engines would take, I believe, 12 pipes, which I don't even have. So let's go with six purging fire. Not that hard to make. That gives us a bonus oil production. It's kind of cool. When looking at the, at the orders, you want to look at both what's easy to achieve as well as what the rewards are. Reduce pipes in any capable building. Interesting. We don't have any metal, though. All of the ruins is quite powerful. Five read per minute, 12 tools, and a building blueprint. We'd have to discover three glades and rebuild one. This is our first timed order. Um, let's try this. Call of the ruins here. Um, I, I tend to think it's not a good idea to take timed orders that require a specific thing um, if you don't have line of sight to that specific thing, but we might be able to make it work here. And then as soon as we see the contents of that dangerous glade, we can pick our um, we can pick our blueprints. We did get a ruin, by the way, so we could probably do Call of the Ruins here. We'll have to either rebuild or salvage this brickyard, which is three-star bricks. That's nice. And we have to deal with an Forgotten Temple of the Sun, which gives three global resolve if we praise the sun, which I guess I'll do with Wildfire Essence, as I have none of these other things. Let's just do that right away. Uh, we're about to get newcomers. Yeah, you two investigate the Forgotten Temple of the Sun. Praise it. Uh, let's see, what are our blueprints here? Greenhouse, Herb Garden, Grill. Bro, can make skewers. Meat, eggs. Or we could use Fertile Ground. Do we have any? Yeah, we do have some Fertile Ground, actually. So probably not a bad idea to take Herb Garden here. Let's do that. And I like 
I like ways to make flour here. Supplier does planks and flour. That's pretty good. Uh, and then if we could... Yeah, I was going to say, if we can get a recipe that would allow, let us use that flour. The bakery is great here. So with the herb garden, we make roots. With the... Bakery, we can turn flour and herbs into biscuits and pie. And we can make the flour with the supplier. That's a really good start, actually. Uh, we are going to need some bricks, but that's what the brickyard is for. We're also going to need to cut into two more glades. And this is where the small ones are useful. Um, is they'll, they'll satisfy their Call of the Ruins requirements. So let us cut into there. Take some newcomers so we have more people. Three people is better than two. You can see our third species is Lizards. Uh, we need one more woodcutter. One fewer woodcutter, actually. But no, we're going to go with more woodcutters. Into those small glades. Stop favoring the harpies so they go to zero. Storm will end pretty soon. Here, you're done there. Please rebuild this. Thanks. Hopefully the storm ends before anyone leaves. I think so. Um, and we can put a lizard as the earthkeeper for a moment, actually. That'll solve everyone's happiness woes. We get more fertile ground to work with here. That's nice. Just need to lower my hostility, though. Small abandoned cache is nice, too, as that'll be easy to break open. Plus one brick production is a cool perk, too. Don't forget to check out the perks available in uh, stuff like that. Okay, crude workstations online, although not as important now. Let's get our first herb garden up. That'd be started with 15 planks. So, first trader arrives at the end of the first storm. If you couldn't deal with your dangerous Galate event, then your trader often has the goods you need to be able to do that. On the lower difficulties, it's pretty easy to part with a few parts to an early trader. Um, so that you can buy stuff. Plantation's a nice blueprint. Enables us to make berries and plant fiber. Although we do already have a blueprint we can use for fertile grounds. Choose one blueprint from un all unlocked blueprints is cool. Or see what's inside glades. I'm going to pick the, uh, the one blueprint here. Uh, I might actually just use that as... The Trapper's Camp, so we can use this Drizzlewing Nest. Um, but I also like taking service buildings from the Omni Picks here. Um, in particular, taking the Tavern is really nice, as that's three Global Resolve, and humans that work there are particularly happy. So let's pick Tavern. Hard to go wrong with Tavern. Okay, woodcutters are woodcutting. Uh, we'll be able to complete that timed order in just a couple moments here. Um, we need a few more available workers, though. Once they're done at the Forgotten Temple of the Sun, things will be a bit easier. Uh, we do need to sell 16 value of goods. Be a little difficult. Um, do you have anything I want to buy, lady? Fabric is pretty good. Let's get some fabric. Get 11 fabric for 5 amber. If she had bricks or planks, I'd probably buy some as well. Uh, otherwise, I don't actually see anything I want from this lady currently. Okay, there's our brickyard rebuilt. And as soon as we cut into this small glade, we are going to have Call of the Ruins complete, which is really cool. There it goes. We get five reeds per minute. We get the tool shop unlock, so three-star tool production. We also get 12 tools, which is enough to um, send to the Citadel this small cash, which will give us more reputation, more money for the next trader. We also get a blueprint. Let's take ranch, a renewable... Um, meat, leather, and egg supply actually means that we do want the plantation blueprints. I'm going to buy that because that can make renewable plant fiber that we can use at the ranch. So that's going to give us a very solid start to our food here situation here, which is going to be much appreciated. Um, first, we need to get some stuff built, though. All right, can I make... We need some bricks is what we need. Please make bricks so that I can make a 
warehouse over here. Put it right there. Let's cut some more trees over here. This large encampment, we can also trade some food for a bit of money here. 24 eggs equals 15 amber. That's a pretty good deal. Are we two not done doing that yet? Uh, so we need to gather more plant fiber in order to get clay for bricks. We'll go there, I guess. One fewer woodcutter for the moment. We've got a lot of wood stockpiles. We're going to need more planks to make the supplier. No, we should make the supplier now so that I can make more planks permanently. Already we're out of uh, bricks. That makes sense. We're out of clay to make bricks. Only 28 seconds for bricks here at the brickyard. That's great news. So in year two, I like to make a focus of getting up a second hearth and or getting... Um, your advanced food online. So we're going to try to get our root garden, uh, our herb garden online. We're going to try to get flower production online. We're going to try to get a second hearth up. But all of that is dependent on stuff. So you got any clay yet? We got one clay. What's the percent chance for clay in these? 25%. Okay, so we should make two clay pretty quick here. Humans working on the herb garden. They can't do anything until storm season starts, though. Uh, what else we got going on here? Another trader would be a good idea soon. Gonna want a stonecutter's camp so we can work the sea marrow deposits, too. These large sea marrow deposits are really good. They have a chance for ancient tablets, as well as just being a really valuable trade good in general. So far, our people are pretty happy. Oh, yeah, that's cause, partly because we got the three global resolve from the Ancient Artifact. That's helping a lot. Looking for Global Resolve bonuses where you can is definitely a good way to get your first run to uh, be a bit stronger. This seems like it's going to be a pretty good settlement once I get the, the pie and biscuits online properly. All right, you're going to be a stone cutter for now. What are we doing on bricks? Bricks are being made. Cool. So second year storm. Hostility is usually still pretty low at this point. Not too difficult. We get some more newcomers. Again, three is better than two, although parts and fabric are better than plant fiber. I'll take the parts and fabric here. Get another stone cutter. Make sure we have two people working the herb garden. Only three woodcutters at the moment, but we have plenty of wood. I meant to tell the hearth not to burn coal. You start with some coal that can be used for dangerous glade events, but we kind of whiffed that. I think this is also a good time to cut into a second dangerous glade, so let's do that. Let's get a little bit more food supply secured here. Uh, now is a good time to open our next set of orders as well. Again, waiting for those timed orders. 50 berries, 50 herbs. Surprisingly hard to do. Burn 12 blight rot cysts. Also pretty hard to do. Currently, we don't get automatic blight rot cysts production. Um, 12 coal, 12 pack of building materials. That's also tough. Let's take 12 blight rot cysts. That means we'll want to get some rainwater hooked up. And keeping the harpies happy is pretty easy. Eight aesthetics decorations. That'll be a bit of annoying. You can just build the decorations and then deconstruct them, though. And that gives bonus biscuit production, which is pretty sweet. Please don't cut these right now. Cut these. What are we doing on bricks here? Eight bricks delivered. Please deliver those. Uh, we'll cut into that glade in a second. We don't have any um, geysers, do we? 
We do. We've got a clearance geyser. Uh, we discovered a large destroyed caravan, a cooperage, and a cache. Looting the caravan gives a ton of coal, planks, copper ore, and purging fire, which we need to deliver anyway. Or we have to trade amber or pack of provisions to get points. We're going to loot this. It's a temporary global resolve penalty when looting, but that's not a big deal. All right, that herb garden is ready to produce. Warehouse is up. Let's queue up our second hearth here, as well as houses, because I think some of our people don't have houses. We've got the decorations to make sure it gets to level two. Small trapper's camp finally ran out of food. Let's move it over here, get some eggs. And we got a new cornerstone. Three plant fiber per minute. Let's get that to help the ranch get online. And let's start looting this. Fortunately, everyone stays in the positive for now. Uh, looks like we need some more builders. Stop harvesting, stop stone cutting. Please build stuff. Okay, let's get the... The supplier's already online, right? Yeah. Let's have our supplier start making flour out of roots and grain, not mushrooms, please. Don't forget to set a limit on things. And then... I'm going to want to queue up a ranch and a bakery. That's going to require some planks, which I was hoping Zorg would have. Uh, advanced building materials are a really convenient thing to buy from traders. So I do strongly recommend. This will be enough goods traded that we can uh, complete the amber trade quest as well. Give me... Can I buy anything for point three? One point of pottery, sure. All right, so complete amber trade. We get two more people, six more tools. That's all nice and good. We also get a new blueprint. Lumber mill for three-star plank production. I think we'd rather go leather worker here. We don't currently have a way to make fabric. Let's get all these buildings up. That's a big building, man. And bakery. Production building should go as close to the main warehouse as possible. Our ranch, too. Okay, so all of that can get queued up. We're going to attend that hearth. More hearths means more fuel consumption, which can be a bit of an issue. Let's get a geyser pump as well. Any of our buildings use green water? Not currently, but I think one of the ones we're building will. You can use rainwater pretty effectively in your first few settlements as um, so the more advanced penalties for rainwater are not in, in effect yet. We don't have very many woodcutters currently. Everybody else is busy with other stuff. How many people are living here? Four... So if I move four over, we can actually get the bonus right now. Let's move one of these houses. And forbid residence in one of them. So now both of these are level one, and we have another plus two global resolve. Which is going to help everybody be very happy. Let's get those harpies generating some more rep here. Once they're in the blue range, you get points over time, which is very good. Okay, seems like we built all this stuff. Let's start work at the supplier here. Start making flour and planks. As for the bakery, that's a lizard's job. The available lizards currently. We only have those. We have two. Uh, they're both hearth keepers. Go back to a herpy hearth keeper. You here? Please make biscuits and or pie. Biscuits with herbs with herbs or eggs, and in both cases we're going to need the flour from the supplier. More people is definitely welcome. Four in either case. Let's take 20 roots. 20 roots is good. Getting back to our roots. So we'll go double supplier, double bakery. Um, and that should result in making lots of baked goods for everybody. We might even want to go double bakery in this settlement so that we can, we can produce more. Oh, the ranch is uh, green water. So is the bakery. Yes. Connect the pipes to the bakery. 
hook this thing up. That actually means we need more wildfire essence to make another hearth, which is a little iffy, actually. Please make meat and eggs. Hey, you're three storm. I don't expect to need to cut into a new glade this year. How many tools are we at? Nine. Wow, 20 planks and 20 bricks in this thing is really good, actually. We might want to break that open. We're not doing well enough on food for me to consider this large encampment. We might want to consider getting up another herb garden. Actually, we, we made plantation. Let's get plantation up. trees. What are we doing done fuel? We have 400 wood, which is a good sign. That's that's what you want to have. Why I like the Royal Woodlands as a biome. They're very easy, comparatively. Right, do we want to start making fabric? Yeah, let's start making fabric. Put it to 20, please. Hopefully we can turn that into clothing later. Uh, let's actually max out the rainwater use here. That means we'll produce the baked goods faster and with a 25% chance of double yield, which is going to be very helpful. Uh, two humans work on this plantation now. So all of our workers. Done at the brickyard. We have 45 bricks. Oh god, what have I done? <laughs> That's not what I meant to do. That's too many bricks. That's too many bricks. All right, we should focus on getting a little bit more food, maybe. We've got our double herb garden going. But it'd be nice if we could gather food more directly somewhere. Yeah, exactly, because we just ran out of small food node over here. So now we have to go down here or something. So let's make a warehouse down here. Another cornerstone. Hey, bonus global resolve. I like survivor bonding. Could also take mist piercers to see what's in glades, but I really don't feel like we need to do that right now. Two dangerous or forbidden glades within 180 seconds of each other. Not hard. Six total glades. Uh, that should be doable. But these we're just looking for stuff that we can complete in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, easier said than done. Again, we're, we're looking for year six or probably year seven to eight win here for the first settlement. Although our current global resolve is really good. Uh, can I make the tavern? Yeah, pretty much. Let's get that tavern up. We staff that with three people. That's even more global resolve, which will cause us to gain lots of reputation per minute if everybody is happy, which they currently are. Also going to make my makeshift post about past time. We started making pack provisions for trade routes. Although note that trade routes aren't very good in your first settlement because you can only trade with the smoldering city. There aren't any other settlements to trade with. So you have very few options for trade route. Keep that in mind. Not much trading in game one. We should have a trader arriving shortly, right? Yeah, 55 seconds. It's not too bad. Once again, we're kind of short on people here. Done at the supplier? Why? Because we have nothing to turn into flour is the current problem, which means the bakery has stopped as well. We're not gathering enough roots off of the herb garden. Hmm. Sounds like we need another herb garden. One that only makes roots. Or we could buy some flour directly, except Farlop has no flour. Bummer. Let's buy some more basic stuff. We could consider buying tools to open caches to get more money. To Yeah, let's do a little bit of that. I'll buy 10 tools. Pretty expensive. But we can do it. I've got lots of sea marrow, which is a valuable trade good. And then we can use that to open the medium abandoned cache. Get 20 ember back. Do 
already have pie and biscuits being made. Coats. We want coats. Artisan. Clothing will help the harpies and the humans get plus five resolve, and we have pretty good fabric production, so we should be able to do that. What are we doing at the ranch here? Food's being made. Yeah, food's going up pretty solidly here. Oh, the small trapper's camp is, uh, whoops. Definitely meant to deconstruct that earlier. My bad. All right, now we'll start gathering roots from the herb garden. In fact, this herb garden over here is going to be roots only for flower production. Enough pipes. Dick's parts. That's a lot of parts. We can trade those to the trader. So I would like to do that. So far, the settlement is going really, really well. Once we get our baked goods back online, everyone will be happy again. Uh, and if we want to, we can man the tavern for big bonuses as well. Do we need another house? We have three unhoused people, one more house. Big herbalist camp I'll take. Taking the faction-specific housing, usually not that good as a blueprint, although it can be worth it. What can the Cooperage do for us? Cooperage can also make stuff. Two Harpies being a supplier. How are we doing on fabric? We got lots of fabric. We should focus on having people make coats here. That's another harpy job. Let's find harpies and make them work there. I think we're mostly maxed out on harpies. Here, have a lizard too. Things are going pretty well so far. I'd say this is a, a reasonably fast start. We'd like to focus maybe on getting a few more of these Orders completed, though. Uh, maybe now is the time to try two dangerous glades in quick succession. Uh, although it looks like we need to cut towards more of them. Where's our woodcutters? I kind of forgot about our woodcutters. Whoops. So we're cutting close to the glade, but not all the way there. And then this one is going to be the other one. I send another woodcutter, we go up hostility. I don't think I want to do that. Bakery is going well. More flowers being made. So again, no more roots. Let's get a blight post up so that I can make purging fire. of the blight post isn't too important for this settlement. In later settlements, I like to put the blight post as close to the ancient hearth as possible. Reduce travel time for blight fighters, but that's only when you're getting blight cysts every three years that that becomes important. I want to use more rainwater. I guess cranking that up is fine. And get more cysts. All right, we're in no position to open two glades this year, it looks like. That's all right. Um, any jobs that can be fired? Let's fire one of these lizards. You're a stone cutter now. Have you gotten any ancient tablets? No, not yet. Bonus Lizard Resolve for every 7 training gear produced is kind of iffy. I'll just take 10 Ember, since I don't foresee that being particularly useful. Could be, but I, I don't foresee it being. 
Once again, everybody's in the blue because of the baked goods. As long as the baked goods prevail, that'll continue to be true. Uh, we need another human working the herb garden so we can make more flour. And I never did get pack of provisions online, huh? Too many people in this settlement. Too many different jobs to fulfill. We don't quite have enough of them. Let's pick our last order now. Discover both Forbidden Glades at the same time. How about I don't do that? <laughs> that sounds hard. How about no? Happy humans. We need eight aesthetics decorations. I can do that. The complete uh, happy harpies here. Although, again, we need more workers for that. Okay, so this one is ready to be cut into. Maybe next year. Yeah, next next storm will cut into both dangerous glades here. Let's see, any large food nodes I can get? No. So, yeah, we we're also going to need to cut into new glades to get more um, food. That seems fair. Wow, lots of newcomers. Seven or five? I'm going to take the five here because they come with food and fuel. Planks are easy to come by. Um, and now we can man the tavern with three humans for plus three additional global resolve. This will also cause us to use ale and wine for luxury and such, but we don't have the means to do that yet. Whoops, I actually didn't mean to cut into that. Oh well, I guess we're doing it. Got a fuming machinery, which we can fix. No, we should just tear it down. We got lots of bricks, lots of rainwater. So tear that down. And that means that in order to complete the other order, we should cut into this dangerous glade now. So let's do that. It means we don't need these woodcutters anymore either. Raider is here. That's actually good. That means if we need help with the dangerous glade, we can get it. Still not making enough flour. We don't have enough roots. Although we're about to gather roots right now. This herb garden is going to be lots of roots. So if you're not, roots are happening. We're getting back to our roots, as it were. Oh, and this got chopped into. It didn't even show. There's a blood flower, which takes food. What do you have, sir? Planks. Pipes are okay. I wouldn't mind some pipes. Three human resolve. I'm buying that. Any plus global resolve perk or even plus species specific resolve perk is going to be super worth it. Grab a few other things. Took eight pipes. Enough to hook up two more things. Oh yeah, wildfire essence. I'll take three of those. Convenient. Thank you, thank you for all the stuff. So we get... Oh, we get 20 pipes. I didn't need to buy pipes. I'm a fool. Okay. Well, whoops. <laughs> Never mind. Why don't you two just deal with this blood flower, hey? Whoops. I think skewer and jerky production. Jerky is liked by both harpies and lizards, so that'd be another advanced food we could maybe use. Um, how many people working on events right now? Drop a couple of woodcutters. I have 600 wood stockpiles, so we really don't need much in terms of woodcutters. Am I doing any trade routes? I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. Uh, what we're going to want is another geyser hookup, right? Yeah, let's hook up the other green geyser. Enough pipes for, for sure. 28 pipes now is insane. Uh, which means we can hook up the ranch. Start using that. You can use that. So the limit of 10. One more purging fire will give us um, call to arms done. And then we need to burn blight rot cysts for fire starter. But we have to make them first. Take 30 more fabric. Once you complete an order that requires um, decorations, you can delete the decorations and get your resources back. 
Trapper's camp is good. We can get access to these large nodes. Let's make a new trapper's camp over here. Stonecutter's camp is finally done with the advanced stuff. I'm just going to deconstruct this. We don't need any more stone, it seems. Oh, we got to hostility four. I'm a fool. Uh, that means we have to pay oil, and if we don't pay, what happens? Two random resource nodes will disappear. That's fine. It's not the worst thing in the world. We're coming up on year six now, so we're, we're hoping to win soon-ish. Um, easier said than done, unfortunately. Still don't have flour. Oh, unfortunate. Um, okay, so what else can we do here? Let us hook this up. How many tools do we have? Only four. We can make more at the tool shop. No, we can salvage the tool shop. Let's do that for 12 tools. That's worth it. This herbalist camp is done. No other nodes. So let's deconstruct that. Work at the trapper's camp instead. Doing on coats. Got tons of fabric, but not enough coats. Three coat makers, please. Um, what else do we need here? This is being dealt with. That'll give us oil as well. That's good. Make a few of these. Humans at the ranch sounds good. Got lots of plant fiber and reeds, so we can make lots of food from the ranch. Um, so far, this is looking quite good. My main problem is not being able to get enough flour, it seems. We do have the butcher, though. Skewers and jerky. Let's get those online. Ten percent chance of producing double yields, but twenty percent chance of consuming more food. Eh. Take ten ember. Okay, we want to win soon here. So our goal this year is to complete as many more orders as possible, as well as to keep our resolve as high as possible. And if we get enough tools, we should send stuff to the send caches to the citadel as well. Uh, we may want to summon an additional trader. Got lots of impatience to work with. You're taking four minutes to arrive. Let's call you immediately. Fewer woodcutters sounds good. There's our six purging fire, which brings two more people. And newcomers are here if we want more. I usually stop around 30-ish people. Any more than that, and it starts to get really hard to fill everybody's needs at the same time. Yeah, we have 27 parts. We can easily trade a few of these away. Let's buy that oil, too. And all your tools. Sounds good to me. Here, you can have 15 parts. You can have... 100 plant fiber. Make up the difference with this. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So now, as soon as we have 50 coats, easier said than done, because people are using those coats. We don't have coats for sale, right? No, you don't. Okay. But we can do trade in industry. Wow, we used 130 rainwater already. Good. This is another blueprint. Still haven't seen any service buildings. Um, porridge is okay. Being able to make wine is nice, too. Uh, although, does anybody actually use wine of these species? No, none of these species like wine. We prefer to make ale. Interesting problem. All right, two guys of the butcher. Jerky we can definitely make. Oops. Please use the steam arrow for this. The skewers we can also totally make. Cool. And this is, yes, green water. So hook that thing up. 
So that means we'll be having a lot of advanced food made. That's great. Anything we want to do with the cooperage here? We can make more coats. Make more coats. The cooperage. Do it. Because we need to build up 50 coats somehow. Even though people are using them. Sounds hard. Gaining lots of rep per minute here. I'm not sure we can make this a year six win, but it should at minimum be year seven. I have 31 tools, so send this to the Citadel. Although breaking it open for those juicy, juicy goods inside is also tempting. We have another cash I can send, right? Yeah, this one. Let's use this one. Actually, can I even break this open? I don't have anything to break it with, right? Oh, I do. Yeah, we can totally break it open. Let's do that. Get all those juicy goods. Pie is hard to make. That's what I'm learning here. Oh, I've got 70 flour, though. So we need another bakery worker. Here, you. Come help. Yeah. Ah, here we go. Explorer's Lodge. That'll give us a global resolve bonus for every ruin that we rebuilt or salvaged. So we should definitely get that online. I'll take newcomers to allow it to. Newcomers with eggs. More people means that when they're happy, we gain reputation faster, so there is an advantage there. I'll do a trade round just for fun. You're fired, though. So this is looking like we're pretty close to finished here. I can make a third hearth, can I not? Yeah, I can. Let's do that as well. here, I guess. We'll move some move some shelters to make that another plus two global resolve. Okay, so that cash is being solved. We still need more coats. We need to cut into more glades. We need to burn more blight rot cysts. Cut into four more glades. Is that going to be a thing I can do? We're not really woodcutting anymore. Let's get the woodcutters wood, wood cutting here. Uh, here you are. I'm going to need a warehouse to make this viable. to unassign. Oh, there's no woodcutters there anyway. Okay. Each hearth also reduces hostility in addition to the other benefits. That levels up the hearth for another plus two. Let's take low the ears so we can make coats better. Still need better coat making. Seems like it's not quite going to happen that we win here year six. I would have to complete both orders and get another whole point before the year is up, and I don't think I can do that. So that means we are going to have a year seven win for the first settlement, which is actually pretty good. I'd say there's, there's generally speaking, nothing wrong with that. Uh, anything I can do to speed this up somehow? Looks tricky. Looks pretty tricky. Floor's Lodge is being manned. Needs are being cut into, but not very fast. And more woodcutters, I suppose. I not have enough coats. <laughs> I'm so impressed. We're making coats with five people at a time, and it's not enough. It was ridiculous, man. Actually insane. Did not get enough blight rots to burn, although next year we'll have enough to, to complete. So overall looking pretty good here. Our 
Everyone's got the strange lights penalty. 20% chance of destroying their yield. Oof. Bummer. Yeah, you two make, you guessed it, more coats. Well, I have no fabric? I've run out of fabric. How did that happen? That poor leather worker is overworked. Towards the very end, becomes much more reasonable to simply decline. Let's summon another trader here. Oh, they're here in 31 seconds. Don't bother. Once again, everyone's in the blue. So we just wait for our reputation to increase 0.88 per minute. As well as, if we can, cutting into a few more glades here for trailblazing. Might also find reputation for sale from traders, potentially. Is there anything here that I need? Coats would be help most helpful. Doesn't seem like that's a thing. You know what, give me a goodie box, just for fun here. The goods are made faster. Thanks. Thanks. So we have no more fabric? Oh, no, no, we have enough fabric. We have enough fabric. They're making it, they're making it. They'll, they'll deliver those coats. And those coats. Oh, time zero? What do you mean time zero? Oh. Nonsense. The artisan is making coats too. Okay, so that should be enough coats, probably. At least I hope so. Looks like we're going to win through rep anyway, though. So, GG. 